you were in the film, what did your paycheck say? <laughs> I can't say that on TV. Yeah, you can in Scandinavian television. You can? you can? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm sure. What's it said, <laughs> uh, slut bitch number one. Oh. That was my official acting credit. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Trying to sing. Yes. You sang pretty well, though. No, no. not really. Uh. Oh, you flatter me. <laughs> Uh, also, you, you wrote the script. What mesmerized right. you most about Tina? Um, I really didn't know. I sort of missed Tina Turner um, just because my age. I was born in 63. In, uh, and by the time I got her for her second uh, come around, mm -hmm. right, um, what really hooked me into her was reading the book. Um, when Disney gave me the book to read, I was really... Um, I was amazed. She's really a hero. And that's, that's what I got out of the book. That's what hooked me in, was that she goes through a transformation, which is um, sort of epic. Mm. It's a real, it's, she's a real tribute to, to women everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's a heroic epic. And you yeah. usually see men in these uh, yeah. epics. Exactly. And that's, you know, the thing that, that I have been trying to do for so long is uh, most of my writing has female characters as their central characters, you know. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was that here was a story, a real life story, about a woman, um, a very three-dimensional complex woman, who goes through a heroic mythological journey. She enters a new land, she has to overcome an adversary, um, and she becomes powerful, and mm -hmm. then brings that back to the people. And that's her music, her powers in her music, um, and in who she is. And so I, I realized that you don't, you know, H Hollywood, the images of women that we see are very two-dimensional. Women are either saved by a man or they act out versions of being men, but they are never powerful by their own right, mm. by their own internal strength. Because with all the pain she's been through and is through in this picture, she still seems to keep her energy up. Mm -hmm. Where does that en energy come from? Oh, that's a mystery. Isn't yeah. It? Uh, well, she chants, you know, and uh, uh, that's one of the things that drew me to the movie because I also am a Buddhist. I also chant, and uh, uh, that helps to affirm people's inner spirit. So I think she gets a lot of her energy from that. But her energy is of an extraordinary kind. I think that when people are really doing what is their great inner joy, you know, and I think performing and singing is a great inner joy for her, mm. then there are hidden resources. You know, we get tired when we're doing things we don't want to do. It must have been di difficult to kind of squash 30 years into a two-hour movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a lot of choices to do and a lot of choices to... Right. Well, you have to find some form that disciplines your choices, because obviously, unless you have a point of view on the life, you don't know what to include and what to cut out. You say, well, this is important, this song's important, and she did another hit here and another hit here, and she did the movie Tommy, and she did Mad Max Thunderdome, so here's all the important points in our life, let's put them together, and you, then you have a six-hour movie that doesn't say anything. So. The question is, what is important in terms of her spiritual story? Mm. Here's a spiritual story of a person who goes from enslavement to emancipation, from misery to freedom. What are the steps in that emancipation? What are the critical turning points that pulled her into a bad relationship with Ike, that got her further and further embedded, and finally got her out of it? Mm. You know, you have two hours to do it in. You're covering 30 or 40 years. So the movie has to decide what the crucial seconds and minutes of her life are. You do a scene here, it maybe is a three or four minute scene. Uh, it's a tiny percentage of a whole life, but it could be the most critical scene in explaining who she was. And then you'll skip 10 years, mm. because those 10 years weren't important, because nothing changed in those 10 years, even though she might have been become more famous, even though she might have won awards, got hits. In terms of the real story that one's telling, the inner life of Tina Turner, not important. So those are the kind of selections you have to make. 
So you deliber uh, deliberately choose the songs to kind of depict her life? Yeah. I mean, that was one important thing, that you don't want to just have some story and then cut to a song and then cut to some more story. They have to be integrated. Mm. Um, and in that sense, I wanted it to have the same momentum as an old-fashioned musical would have. You know, in the, a really good musical in the old days, Singing in the Rain or West Side Story is a very good example. The story would never stop during the musical numbers. West Side Story, you know, there is scenario being played out all the way through the movie. Um, that's the danger of this kind of movie, that it becomes a performance piece that you stop to just watch people mm. sing. So we selected the, the songs very carefully and what was happening in her life during them to get some feedback between the two, some illustration of story points while she was singing.